Okay, so I have a fairly straight talk here. I'm just going to have to talk fast to make it lightning. Um, we, we talk a lot about what concept should look like, and I'll say a little bit about that, but mostly I'll talk about what makes a nice concept. What are the concepts we want? And I'll give credit, there's Alex Stefanov here, who has um, pushed for, for concepts for a very long time, like 20 years. Um, let's see, the other three, uh, me, Andrew Sodden, and Gabby Dasreis, are sort of the main de designers of the current uh, cut of this, and Andrew is the implementer over in TCC2, uh, in TCC 6.2. Uh, okay, here. Um, we, we wanted a uh, concept in, uh, in 80, 87, uh, couldn't get all of it. There's been several efforts over the years. Um, the C++ OX one um, sort of collapsed. And then we did an interesting thing. Um, uh, Alex Stefanov called all the main uh, people that he could get to Palo Alto and said, okay, we're not going to design concepts, we're going to use them. We are going to write the concepts for the algorithms in the STL. We're going to write all that down. And then your job, pointing at me, is to go home and design the language to make this work. And so we started with the application. And the first thing we did uh, was to write a 100-page specification of the standard library, which sort of has evolved into parts of the ranges one. And, and this is what I'm going to, to talk to you about. Um, here's what I showed you yesterday. Good old code, um, standard template code without concepts with uh, horrible uh, different and uh, some uh, interesting side effects like these uh, splendid uh, unmatched uh, error messages. And finally, that we can today uh, do uh, just as well in a generic sense. That is, we can define sortable. Uh, we don't have to have Dennis to define uh, double for us. And uh, they're compile time pr predicates. If you look around, uh, th there's a lot of that around. I mean, uh, iterators are defined. As you can ask a type if it's an iterator. Uh, random access iterators and such. Um, how about a number? We can define what a number is, mergeable. Um, basically, uh, you, you can just ask a, a type uh, what it is, and it's not just one type, combinations of types. This is simply um, sort of logic. You, you, you can ask for properties and get on with it. And you can take as many um, parameters as you like. And you can get it to work. So we can try and find in a vector, Waldo, uh, find, find in a vector, um, Euler's constant, and uh, that will not work. It is not a string, and vice versa. It all works very fine. Uh, now, uh, we looked at this, and we looked at the user uh, use of it in a large code base, and we found that um, we start out with a sort of a very computer science uh, view of this. So if you look at the first version there, it says that uh, there must be a template argument that's a type, and that type must be a sequence, and S must take a reference to the type that had to be a sequence. Um, we don't speak like that. Um, so we had a shorter form which says we want a type that's a sequence, and the uh, argument must be a reference to that sequence. And finally, we got to what we actually say is that uh, the arguments must be a sequence. Uh, so that simplifies a lot. I put some design principle in, in here. Uh, simple things are now simple. The onion principle is that you can uh, do things very simply, but you can't do everything. So you peel one layer off the onion, and you still can't do everything, so you peel another layer off the onion, and you cry more and more as you get closer. Um, this is not the only place you do this in C++. Um, so how do you define concepts? Now we are leaving what I did yesterday. Basically, the idea is you pick them from somebody else's library, just like functions and other uh, classes and such. But, but basically, you can, you, you can say combine yourself a new concept by simply saying, I want a, 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 an expression, sortable, it should be a sequence and a random access, and uh, the comp we have to be able to compare uh, value types. 
And so that's the next level of complexity. And finally, we get down to the crying here again. Um, we can define it ourselves out of properties. So here we say that to be equally comparable, we have to take uh, two uh, variables of the type and we have to be able to do um, assignment and it should yield a bool or and it's not assignment, equality, and inequality and should yield a bool. So it's fairly easy to build up um, uh, concepts and you will find that the text for writing the concepts is shorter than the text for defining them in the standard. We also had something for concepts, but uh, for semantics, but we don't have that yet uh, in the language. So now to the real question, what does a, uh, make a concept good? I mean, we, 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 we don't just write functions and discuss functions, we discuss about what they do and how you design them well. So that's the level we have to before we can understand how all this works. Um, we, we have um, the built-in types of concepts, there's arithmetic types and floating types. So we've actually had concepts uh, in C and C++ since about uh, 74. Uh, STL concepts, they have iterator and um, containers, you can look it up what they are, they're specified. It's just, as I keep pointing out, compilers don't read manuals. Um, and uh, other fields have concepts, monad, group, ring, and field, and graphical concepts. And the other thing we observe is that in all of these cases, in all of the cases where we have uh, what we would consider a good concept, it has some semantics. I mean, it's not just plus, minus, uh, multiply, and divide. They have to have some relation to each other. And you should be very suspicious when somebody comes and says, I've got a concept, but um, it doesn't have any semantics. Uh, that's probably not a concept. It's a misuse of the language, a um, bit, bit like a function. I have a function, but I can't tell you what it does. Um, so. Uh, one of the things that we found as a practical thing is specifying semantics is a very effective design uh, technique. Uh, you start writing a concept, some constraints on an algorithm, and you find that the first version doesn't work too well, and the second version doesn't work too well. It's like any other code. But saying, okay, let's try and think about the semantics. Let's try and write the semantics down. You can look in the Palo Alto report, which was the report from the meeting in Palo Alto that Alex Stefanov had us design the whole thing, has the algorithmic, uh, the, the semantics of, of everything defined. I don't have time for an example here. Uh, incomplete concept um, constraints can be used for initial development, but you shouldn't really be happy till you reach something with semantics that you can let your users use. So um, you try for, for complete concepts. Here's uh, the sequence. A sequence has to have a value type and an iterator type. That's the first two lines. It has to have a begin and an end, and the begin and the end each has to uh, generate an, I, uh, an uh, iterator. And then there's some requirements on the iterator. The iterator has to be an input iterator, and um, there should be the same type of the value type of t and the value type of the iterator of t should be done. This is not quite complete, but it's pretty complete, and you can fill it up yourself from the standard. Um, the ideal here is plug and play. Uh, a lot of us has gotten used to the habit of providing absolute minimal specifications for generic code. So a lot of people would look at that um, simplified sum and saying that it requires uh, something to be incrementable because the accumulator is incremented. And that leads to really complicated design, really complicated systems. What you really should do is to say, no, 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 we take a number. That will give the implementer the freedom of choosing between plus and plus equals for uh, doing the thing. And uh, the design principle is not minimal specification, it is actually for semantic coherence. Uh, you have to look at uh, what is the semantics of what you're doing, and implementation is not the specification. And implementation is one example of an implementation, and for most interesting cases, next year, the year after, somebody comes around with a cleverer one than the one you thought of, and if you have minimized the requirements minimize the, some kind of minimal concept there. You can't fix your code without changing all the interfaces. 
So um, one thing that people talk about a lot is accidental match, and I found in my mailbox a very old example, namely the um, shape and the cowboy um, from the dark ages of object-oriented programming, now done with concepts. Uh, you have a drawable concept, and you have a class shape with a draw, and a class uh, cowboy with a draw, and, um, well, something happens. Uh, we don't quite know why. Uh, well, I told you to just be suspicious about um, concepts without semantics, and if you have to specify the semantics of draw uh, one, it's hard to specify the semantics of one operation, and two, you wouldn't make, get that mistake. So uh, what you do is that real concepts tend to have more than one operation and more than one uh, associated type, and that means that basically this uh, nice theoretical problem mostly goes away. There's a classical example of things that look exactly the same from a syntactic point of view, but not from a semantic point of view. And we talk a lot about that. The classical example is input iterator and forward iterator. Um, if they're under your control, just add an operation, a random operation for anything to distinguish them. If not, you can use trait classes exactly what you do today. Concepts do not take away your usual uh, abilities, and so there's some uh, uh, beware of sim si single property concepts and design principle here. Don't let the tail wag the dog, uh, because uh, if you design to avoid accidental clashes, you can end up with something that makes all of your code uglier. Um, overloading, I showed you that yesterday. Uh, basically, uh, go try the concepts. Um, they are uh, seriously addictive if you write uh, template code. They shorten your template code dramatically. It limits the amount of boilerplate. And basically the idea is that it gets better code. Shorter, cleaner, nicer code. And it removes uh, boilerplate. Notice that the last thing down there is the elimination of those horrible error messages. The horrible error messages is a symptom. It's not the disease. What you do is you fix your design, you fix your interfaces, and then the code gets better. Thank you.